250,000 followers on Instagram, but they're known for like teaching like crazy boxing techniques and strategy. And they're like, you got to check out these winning gloves, right? Yeah. Winning's a brand of gloves. Right. Even if it's a paid endorsement, people will listen mm. because that person is a specialist within that subject. Are you scared or excited about AI? I'm excited about AI. I just don't think it's it's hyped a lot mm. and it's progressing at a really fast pace, which Super is great. I prefer us. Yeah. But the thing with AI, everyone's like, oh, it's going to replace humans. It's going to replace, you know, content writers. It's going to replace everything. I'm like, it I'm is. like, we're so far away from that, though. It will. Like seven years away. That's in short time. Probably some companies three. But we're not far away from it. I mean, we were far away from it back in 2000. And back in, in 2000, 90s. even more far. We were far, but we're close now. And, and I, I don't have the exact answer or crystal ball on how close, but like if I had a guess, at least in the marketing world, in the next five years, I do not see AI replacing a human. And it's still a short time, though. Bro. It, it's so hard, but even, even more than that. And here's why here's a basic concept with AI. So check this out. If you want to think about like, Everyone talks about AI writing content. There's way more to AI with systems and processes and automation with analytics and getting more informed decisions. But let's just look at content as a basic example. Mm -hmm. When you do a search on Google or any search engine, are the results always 100% accurate when you look up some of the no, stats? No, they're actually bad. No. Yeah, a lot of times they're yeah, off. Bad, yeah. right. Now, Google knows this. Bing knows this. They've been working not five, not 10, maybe 20 plus years to fix misinformation. And right. it's not perfect. What AI is doing is scraping the web, gathering all the information out there, and spitting out an output based on the input. Mm. So if they're gathering false inputs, right? Not all of them are false, but even if a small percentage of mm -hmm. them are, it can screw up the outputs. Right. And that's what you're seeing with AI. And yes, AI will get better, but you're still going to have a lot of bad information because the inputs are off and that's not easy to fix. And I don't see that being fixed over the next five, six, seven years. Mm. Interesting. Well, even with the input, the input is based off of what humans actually input into the yeah. system. So AI is actually getting a lot more sophisticated daily because of the usage. That's you right. You have over 100 million users using it, I mean, daily. Mm. You know, but that breaks down to hourly. And when it comes to the minute, you know, I can't give you those numbers, but I'm sure it's up there. It, so it's I crazy. Think, I think the information will get better, but I, you know, potentially, I hope it will. But yeah. I think AI is a, I think people should be not technically scared because I feel like they should work with it, but they should be worried. Fact. The ones that aren't educating yes. themselves. The I, ones I, I, I think you nailed it. People should be working with it. Mm. With it, yeah. If you embrace AI and you learn how to yeah. leverage it to do a better job at the company you work at or for your own business, right. you're going to get even further in life. Absolutely. But if you stay afraid of it and you're just like, no, I don't want to touch it, I think you're going to start becoming replaced by other people who either understand AI, know how to leverage it, or you're going to get replaced by AI, one right. or the other. Right. Which AI are you using right now? Uh, so we use a lot of open uh, AI. They have mm. some APIs, mm. and they're the ones that created ChatGPT. Right. Uh, and Bing is using them. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. But yeah. we use a lot of their APIs to help make better informed decisions for our business. Mm. And it's still early phases, and none mm. of it's like really perfect. But mm. like you said, you know, five years is going to be really dangerous. I think even in a few years, it's going to make our lives much easier. By December, we'll start feeling the impact for, i mean people are feeling it now but by december i feel like impactful it'll start making a a little bit of a push yeah I, for I, sure. I, I, and i think every day that goes by these ai tools and the learning that they have is just incredible because of so many daily users like me you and mentioned. sean text right. almost what well, we text all the time he's About, always yeah. he's showing I mean, me it's stuff, making sure some of my stuff. contracts yeah. now it's pretty crazy. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You prompt it and it makes yeah. a contract. So instead of paying a lawyer 500 an hour, right. you just send it to the lawyer say, can you review this real quick? Yeah. That's smart. I yeah. never thought about that. Yeah, with yeah. dude, it's, it's, it's... NDAs, disclaimers, yeah. contracts. Even it breaks down. He was showing me one one, one tool. Won't disclose it. But it was breaking down uh, the episodes in the sense of like um, of like place value. So you can do coursework too. You can like turn it into a course if you want. Yeah, that's cool. So you put a two hour podcast on it and mm -hmm. it breaks down the key points for you. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So yeah. digest the podcast for you. Right. Yeah. It yeah. Breaks down the and that uses open AI. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Open AI is amazing. Yeah. I think Google's Bard is going to be 
really good. You know, I know a lot of people are counting out Google, but Google has so much information. They have more than OpenAI or anyone else out, out there. I do believe their AI is going to be amazing. It's just going to take time. Right. It's going to take time, but they can be late to the game because you still got China's going to get involved heavy. And yep. when, they, when they come, I mean, chat, uh, GPT might just be a, a poodle mm. from what they're – I just we can't count them out either. So Google has to – they're going to drop. They got to do it now. And um, – <laughs> waiting, it won't, it won't. They won't benefit from waiting yeah. because every system that's out, if you think about it, it's getting more and more sophisticated daily. Mm. So how can their system advance if they're waiting later to drop? By the time they drop, these systems will be far more advanced. Google will still be technically in beta. Yeah, and and I think they're pushing really hard. But the way I look at it is if if you look at the most popular social network mm. right now, let's call it Facebook. I know Facebook owns Instagram right, and WhatsApp. Right. Facebook wasn't the first, right? There was a lot of others MySpace, that came. I think. MySpace yeah. was mm. a lot earlier. Google wasn't the first search engine either. Yahoo Second. was before there. Alta Vista, Lycos, the list goes on and on. But in this, it's it's a race right now because it's just it's a sophistication race. Yeah. So who's going to be at far more sophisticated in this AI space and at what speed? You got Chat Four already dropped, right, Sean? Yeah. And then yeah. they're working on four point five. So I mean, is this it's gonna get? It's going to get crazy. And when you look at from three to four and all the variations, just the improvements are so crazy. Oh, and they're also trying to make it cheaper and cheaper. Mm. What are the biggest opportunities you, you see for 2023 and 2024? From a marketing standpoint, I th this is going to sound silly. I actually don't think it's AI. Mm. I think podcasting is one of them. Podcasting isn't that competitive. There's like less than 10 million podcasts, over a billion blogs. So if you think about the ratios, it's an open landscape still. Mm -hmm. So that's one of them. Mm -hmm. Two is taking an omni-channel approach with marketing. Like when we try to acquire customers from TikTok and our ad agency, we're seeing that for our clients, a lot of times TikTok is like 40, 50% cheaper than Facebook ads. Wow. Which is better. Yeah, which is it has a better algorithm, too. So it's just like, that's just so much cheaper. Why wouldn't mm. you want to save the money and acquire as many people as possible for as little as possible? Mm. The other big opportunity that we're seeing, and this one's the dead simplest one, but just people are lazy and no one wants to take the time, updating your content. No matter what you search for on Google or anywhere on social media, there's already content on that topic. The issue is, is most of the content is old, outdated, so... The algorithms of social platforms and search engines don't want to showcase it. But the mm. moment you keep it fresh and up to date, it'll boost you. It'll boost you. Just look at Wikipedia. They rank and get so much traffic because people keep modifying Wikipedia pages <laughs> every <laughs> single day. Yeah, yeah. I probably bet every single minute someone's modifying a Wikipedia right. page. I don't have the stats or data on that, but if I had to take a guess, I bet you it's on the minute basis. Probably. Wow. What is re uh, reverse ETO? Can you explain that to us? Reverse ETO. I don't know what reverse ETO is. ETL. ETL? Yeah, yeah, yeah. ETL. I don't know what reverse ETL is. <laughs> um, well, um, I was looking through your um, MP Digital. Uh huh. And um, uh, the, uh, one of your associates was touching bases on it. It was real interesting to me. So it was the difference between gathering data and then inputting the, the data when it comes to like your ads and stuff like that. I found it interesting. I have no idea what reverse ETL is, but <laughs> that's why we have 750 people that okay, specialize okay. in that's different baller. things. That's yeah. a good answer. Yeah. I should learn it. Yeah. Don't get me I, wrong. I, she, I mean, I learned a lot just from, you know, just yeah. kind of looking into it. I'm like, okay, I never heard of that. So Yeah, me uh, neither. I'll she, look it into was it. talking about <laughs> ads and stuff. Yeah, we have so many people that specialize <laughs> in different yeah. things. Like we have, we literally have a handful of people. You that have 700 only, employees? Yeah, seven something just wow. in that company. That's a lot. Just in that one, geez. and we're still hiring. But like when I look at so it, are you, are you not going to replace with AI? Uh, we're even using AI, but we still need. Heck, we're expanding fast internationally, oh, okay. right? So like we're opening up this year in France, Italy, Germany. We just added Singapore. Nice. We just added a head of LATAM mm -hmm. for to expand it to Mexico, Colombia, Chile, and Argentina. Mm -hmm. Uh, we just uh, I think we mentioned Singapore. We're interviewing right now for a head of Malaysia. I just finished interviewing today for a head of uh, Spain. Is, it, is wow. it mandatory for your employees to learn how to use AI and work with it? Uh huh. They make it mandatory, so you don't have to get rid of anybody in your workforce. Mm. No, we, we we want them to figure out how to use AI to make their job more efficient, so they can focus on the things that are important and not do the mundane, boring stuff. That's right. how you do it.
I like that. I like that model. You feel like celebrity endorsements are a waste of money. Why do you feel that way? So I feel celebrity endorsements are a waste because most of them are too generic. So like, let's talk about the Kardashians. You know, some people hate on the Kardashians, but you got to admit they built an amazing business Powerful. empire. Yeah, you got to respect that. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what people think about the Kardashians or how they got popular. They were really smart on how they took that fame or how they built up that fame and took that fame and turned it into a big business empire. Mm -hmm. Not just for one of them, but for pretty much the whole family. Mm -hmm. Right. If you get Kylie Jenner to push, if I get Kylie Jenner to push my marketing agency, NP Digital, I may get some leads, but it's just irrelevant. Like her audience is like into makeup and cosmetics and clothing Mm -hmm. and stuff. And that's why most celebrity endorsements don't work because it doesn't match the product. Mm -hmm. And now you have it where so many people are using celebrity endorsements for everything Mm -hmm. and they're being brand evangelists. It's not working that well. Mm. But the moment you get like Rihanna to create her own company or you get Kylie Jenner to create her own company, people are like, oh, you're not pushing someone else and you're not just getting paid. You're creating your own products. Which they're supposed to. Yeah, which is what they should be doing. And that people love and that converts really well. Mm. But the product's got to be aligned. Like, for example, let's say The Rock. The Rock is known for, like, fitness, humor. The guy's, like, buff. He's smart. He's good with business. But if he created a course being like, here's how to pass your CPA exam. (laughs) I'm going to teach you guys how to do really well in accounting. (laughs) And accounting is a big business, right? Right, There's a lot of massive accounting companies throughout the whole world. Everyone does taxes. People have to do accounting for every single business, even personal finances. It just wouldn't convert well. Mm. It it doesn't line up. But if Rock sports an energy drink, which he does. Blow. Yeah. It'll blow up. It makes sense. So... They got to do their own products. I do think there is value in influencers if the celebrity is directly aligned to the product and service and is really involved in the business. And believes in it. Yes, like Mm -hmm. Ryan uh, Reynolds and Mint Mm -hmm. sold for 1.3. Ryan didn't create Mint. They gave him equity to be the evangelist and be part of the company and help Mm -hmm. out. He believed in it. He wanted to put in the time and the energy. Flow rider and Celsius. Yeah. Yeah. And then Which if he you, had to sue to get his money, but, but he, still, that. he still made a lot of money. Like yeah, it's good dollars. for him. And then the other one is, uh, you know, if you get a micro influencer, mm-hmm. like someone who's known for like something really specific, even mm-hmm. if they only have like a half a million followers or a hundred thousand, mm-hmm. but their audience is super engaged because they're really well known for it. Like you do boxing. If you have someone who has 250,000 followers on Instagram, but they're known for like teaching like crazy boxing techniques and strategy and they're like you got to check out these winning gloves right yeah. winning's a brand of gloves right. and if they say you got to check out winning gloves are the best and they break mm-hmm. them down even if it's a paid endorsement people will listen mm. because that person is a specialist within that subject that's what i think and that's a huge opportunity right now in marketing mm. in 2023 2024 i even see that going to five six years from now ai, AI cannot replace that right. no. people want to deal with uh, companies that have a face. No one mm. likes faceless companies, but it has to be aligned. I can't have LeBron James pitching my marketing company. Yes, <laughs> he's a business mogul. He's crushing it, but people don't know LeBron James for marketing. I'm not saying he's a bad marketer. I'm just saying people know him for marketing. Mm. I mean, uh, basketball. Yeah, basketball. Yeah, not marketing. So, But if mm. he had a new basketball that has some special grip on it, he would be perfect for it. Exactly. Mm. Or shoes. Or even something for fitness like yeah. Tonal. Mm. Right? I bought that a Tonal perfect. because of LeBron, LeBron James. James. Oh, is that the ice thing? No, a tonal is like resistance. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. It's like you can, uh, it's electric resistance, so you can modify the resistance. He's an investor in that company? I, yes. I think he has got equity it. in it for sure. It, or investor or mm-hmm. equity owner. Maybe yeah. you got it for free. I don't know, but mm. I saw Serena Williams on the commercial. I saw LeBron James. <laughs> How I was like, important right. is for e people who are in e to use uh, SurveyMonkey? I think it's great because you can figure out what's wrong with your pages, mm-hmm. your products, and what changes you need to make to make them better because Mm. like when you look at analytics like google analytics yeah yeah, you can see oh people are leaving this page but why are they leaving that page survey monkey is a survey response there's quantitative data Mm -hmm. and there's qualitative quantitative is like the numbers qualitative is him getting feedback Mm -hmm. survey monkey is like a uh 
a version of just talking to people and getting mm. feedback. Hey, why aren't you buying? Why are you leaving the page? What else How would you like to see? Is it? Mm. Super effective. Mm -hmm. We like taking all that data, assuming you're getting enough quantity and responses, right. not like one or two, but if you're getting like 50, 60, 100 for a specific page and you make changes, we usually see revenue and conversions go up. Wow. So it's based on the consumer's perspective of how you can make your company from a visibility standpoint better. Exactly. Just by asking them simple questions in regards to, you know, yeah. they're happy or not with the service or product. Yep. What else would you like to see mm. on the page? Why didn't you buy? Mm. Um, you know. Uh, how many business owners actually modify their business based on the consumer's perspective? Very little. Very, and that's <laughs> terrible. That is. That's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> you get yeah. a stubborn business owner. And, I used to do it. Yeah. It would record their checkout screen and yeah. I'd see what they were doing. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. it's, 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 it's important because it's research. It's market yeah. research. You're able to scale your business up from that just by understanding your consumer. That's right. Yeah. right. Is LinkedIn underrated? I think LinkedIn's massively underrated, especially if you're in B2B. Mm. It's like one of the best social networks for generating revenue for a business. LinkedIn's probably our... If I had a guess right now, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure YouTube is number one for social channels for revenue for us. Mm. Uh, for our consulting company and linkedin is number two whoa oh, wow. i'm like pretty sure LinkedIn on that that's yeah. uh mark zuckerberg's uh, ex-business partner created linkedin really yeah oh i didn't know that yeah, his company. he's got a lot of ex-partners that are successful <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah that's what happens when you got a group of people that are successful what uh mark's made a shitload of money he yeah. has everybody associated with too yeah either by suing him or creating something else yeah facts <laughs> what platforms do you see taking over social media platforms uh platforms i see tiktok booming i see whatsapp as still a big opportunity no one's really why? figured out how to use why why i see 10 cent owns them and they're like the biggest conglomerate but why here like what what impact does whatsapp have in the u.s so so whatsapp um everyone globally is everyone globally right now on whatsapp is using it because in a lot of countries it costs money to text. Mm. It's free to text. Mm. Uh, he, it's free to text on WhatsApp. You just got. It's have, also controlled by the government over there too. TikTok is right. WhatsApp. What's, WhatsApp is. WhatsApp is owned by Facebook. No, it's owned by a company called Tencent. That's a TikTok. Oh, TikTok no, no, no. is yeah. Yeah, TikTok. WhatsApp is too. Facebook, yeah, Facebook bought them, right? Yeah. Facebook oh, Facebook them. bought yeah. WhatsApp. Oh, so yeah. Tencent used to own them then. They no, created. No, no. Uh, uh, WhatsApp was funded by Sequoia Capital. Mm -hmm. It was some founders uh, based in San Francisco. That You're thinking of here. WeChat. That's what uh, I'm thinking. Yeah. My bad, you guys. That's yeah. WeChat. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Because I okay, okay. So Tencent. Okay. I agree. We, what, WeChat's popular, I think, in Korea, right? No, it's no. everywhere now. But it's oh, that's Kako Talk. Kako Talk is Korea. Kako Talk. We <laughs> yeah, Kako Talk. <laughs> WeChat is China. Is China. That's yeah, Ten, that's right. Tencent owns them. Yeah. Okay. So WhatsApp. Okay. 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 Yeah. Gotcha. But TikTok might get banned. TikTok may get banned. You never know. I don't think it will. I think maybe for governments and stuff they'll regulate it. But in the U.S., I still think it'll be popular. People love it. Okay. The college campuses are banning it, but oh, colleges are. Co uh, probably. Oh, I think they said thirty, forty percent already. Big time colleges, what? universities banned it already. Why? Yeah. Bro, why would they no ban idea. it? The data. It's they banned crazy. TikTok, but not Adderall. So. <laughs> <laughs> They That's want so the students true. on that. I, I, I knew when I was in college, I knew so many students that were just taking Adderall. It was so it's bad. Terrible. I don't know why they were doing You weren't it. on it? No. <laughs> wow, Sean. <laughs> no, props, because I feel like everyone was. I've never even. Well. And, and if people want to get on, I don't think there's. It's up to them. I was just a big believer, and it's like, you know. I try to be natural as much as possible. There you go. Yeah. So um, Facebook owns WeChat. TikTok. No, I mean, sorry. Facebook owns WeChat. Uh, What's up? What, what's up? Yeah, they also have the. Are we good now? Yeah, yeah. We, we good. We, we, WeChat China. Okay. Kako Talk Korea. <laughs> Kako I don't know. Talk. I don't know what that is. <laughs> hey, you gotta check it out. It's, it's big. Big for the Korean market. Oh wow. Okay. We gotta wrap it up soon, but I want to know the best hire you've ever made. Was it the chef? Was it the driver? Who was it? Personal or corporate? Let's do both. Corporate CEO. I'm a terrible operator. We have a CEO named Mike Gullickson. Uh, he's in Wonders for us. 
I wouldn't say he's a only amazing hire, but he's brought a lot of amazing people with him. And there's a lot of amazing people we brought before him that helped us get him. Mm. Uh, but we continually try to bring amazing people mm -hmm. who have done what we're looking to do. And they've already done it before. Mm. Like he ran one of our competitors. It was called iProspect. I don't know how many employees they had, maybe 5,000, I'm guessing 6,007 wow. or 4,000 or something like that. They're just a larger version of us. Right. So he's already done what we were trying to do, and he helped us grow. When we got him, maybe we were 200, 300 people. He's more than doubled us in size. Wow. Um, and personal, um, it depends who you ask. If you ask my <laughs> wife, she's going to say <laughs> the a nanny. nanny. The nanny. Edith, who's been amazing. If you ask me, uh, I would say either Philmon, who drove me here today. I love him to death. Mm -hmm. Or Franny, who helps us clean, but that's not, she does an amazing job there. But why I love Franny is I travel almost every single week for work. And like she'll have my suitcase ready with all my clothes, depending on how many days I'm gone. I don't have to oh, check anything. And it's just I like wish. so convenient. That sounds amazing. I'm packing a day for New York and it sucks. Wow. Third world remember. problems, right? Right. Yeah. And then another question. Um, what are some things that you can tell a lot of people out there struggling with e ecom? Like, what makes the ecom business do good, and what makes the ecom business like? What yeah. makes it? What's the difference in a good one and a bad ecom business? So, good ones typically have funnels like upsells and downsells mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if someone's buying one product, you already got them buying. You got to get them to buy more, right? And you got to figure out how to upsell them. Ideally, the products that you upsell are related to the core product that they bought, and it offers anything helping get results in an automated way or uh, uh, getting results faster. Mm -hmm. So speed or automation. Okay. If people can get results faster or in an automated way, they'll you typically pay for the upsells. But what about when it comes to clothing? Because everyone isn't selling like an actual product. Sure. So like clothing, with. if you someone buying underwear, you know they're going to need underwear. I don't know how often people replace them every year mm -hmm. or socks every year, every six months. Mm -hmm. Or if they buy T-shirts, they're going to need more T-shirts like mine here. They have some holes on it, little ones. Um, and I buy like 12 of the same white T-shirt and they last for a while. Mm -hmm. And that's what also makes it easy to pack because I wear the same clothes. It's just <laughs> same thing, same colors. Uh, and they could send reminders saying like, hey, click here for a subscription or click here to get uh, a new shirt or we have a new style that's coming in. Mm -hmm. I think email marketing is huge. A lot of people take that for granted. Mm -hmm. And a lot of e-commerce these days are doing email, but they're not doing text. You know, you can't stop with email. You got to add in the text messaging. We see better revenue from texting right now, assuming you collect enough phone numbers, mm -hmm. than we do from emails for e-commerce. The other thing that we're seeing good e-commerce companies make is they're using tools like SurveyMonkey or using the uh, video recording tools yeah. like the Crazy Eggs to figure out what's wrong with the pages and how to improve the checkout mm -hmm. flows. Uh, good e-commerce companies also offer multiple payment options. We typically see an 18%-ish increase in revenue when people add PayPal as a payment option Wow, as well. I hate PayPal. It's a big jump, though. Yeah, but it, people love it. They love clicking that button, and it makes it easier, and they have multiple mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. funding sources typically in their PayPal account. Right. And what's the best um, app that they can attach to their stores for the texting, uh, marketing, the marketing text? There's... A lot of them, I wouldn't actually say there's one that's better than others. I would actually look at what e-commerce platform you're mm -hmm. on and which ones fit natively gotcha. and integrate with your CRM. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you would want one that just plug and plays. Right. You don't want to just go and add uh, a random one and be like, oh, it doesn't integrate, and then we got to do everything manual. Gotcha. Just like email softwares. There's a lot of them, right? Mm -hmm. It's the question of which ones integrate really nicely with your CRM and you can just get everything right. done pretty quickly. Neil, it's been a pleasure. Any closing thoughts and where people can find you? NeilPatel.com for my blog or all my social handles are also Neil Patel or uh, NP Digital for our ad agency. Nice.